to Neon Trash, everybody. I'm your host, Tommy the Hammer. Today I thought we would do a video game review. Growing up in the 1980s, we really didn't have all that much in the way of survival horror video games. I mean, I played Castlevania, Castlevania 2, Castlevania 3, eventually we moved on to the Sega Genesis and got Splatterhouse 2, Splatterhouse 3, and of course, moving on to the PC, uh, we played the original Alone in the Dark series. when it comes down to the world of survival horror. I've been playing them for an extremely long time, and it really wasn't until the 1990s when, on the PS1, Resident Evil debuted that we really got that cinematic feeling from the horror movies in a freaking video game. I was blown away, and Resident Evil 1 really took the cake. The controls themselves are god-awful, and they were terrible back then, they're terrible now, so it really wasn't until Resident Evil 4 came out where they employed the over-the-shoulder camera angle that I absolutely fell in love with. A lot of video games after 2004 copied Resident Evil 4, which brings me to the review of The Evil Within Part 2. When I first played the original Evil Within, well, I was blown away completely. Mainly because it felt like the game creators were trying to emulate everything that they had learned with Resident Evil 4 in a brand new storyline, and I found that to be commendable. So I personally think the original Evil Within is a horror masterpiece. Everything about that game is completely well balanced, and I feel like the Evil Within Part 2 takes all those successful notes from the original game and goes that extra mile. This game really tries to give you an in-depth, massive, visceral horror experience overall. I always found the character of Sebastian to be very engaging. He's a terrific lead. He reminds me of a lot more brooding version of Leon Kennedy from the Resident Evil series. So naturally speaking, I was able to gravitate towards the main character of the game, and in part two, they really flesh out, you know, his overall storyline, and I, you know, definitely appreciated that element. Now, I completed the game on the casual difficulty setting, and I know what you guys are thinking, ah, oh, Tom, you played casual? Give me a break. Well, hold on a second, guys. Video games today are immensely difficult, and even the game's creator suggests playing The Evil Within Part 2 on the casual difficulty setting. game to be very hard regardless. There were many moments where I ran out of ammo, a whole lot of scenarios where I didn't know what the fuck I was going to do, but in the end, I came through it all, and man, what an experience. This game is absolutely terrifying. If I could describe the first Evil Within as anything, it would be The Matrix meets Hellraiser. Part 2, however, comes at things from a completely different angle. And if I had to compare this sequel to anything, it would be Ghostbusters meets Hellraiser. The attention to detail in this game is jaw-dropping. It just seems massive and omnipresent. Just about everything I had to do came with some slight apprehension, mainly because the open world in this game is just you know, freaking scary. So in the end, guys, I loved this game and highly recommend it, especially if you are a huge fan of over-the-shoulder camera type of video games. I'm not really into FPS, you know, first-person perspective games. Um, you know, I really hate those old-school 
horror games, the tank-like controls, and I feel like over the shoulder is the way to go. And what with the brand new Resident Evil going FPS? Well, guys, the only games that really offer up the over the shoulder classic camera angle anymore is the Evil Within series. And if the first game was a 9 out of 10, well, I could give the Evil Within Part 2 a solid 8.5 out of 10. So if you've never played this series and you're new to the world of survival horror, well, I definitely recommend the Evil Within and the Evil Within Part 2. Give them a shot, turn off the lights, turn up that music, you'll thank me in the end.